to episode three of Knitting on the Farm podcast. My name is Angela and it is Saturday the 7th of March 2020. So it's about two weeks from I podcast last and um, I'm still coming to you on a wet and windy, a wet and windy day. We've still had horrendous weather and uh, it doesn't look as though it's going to change over the weekend either. If you hear a little pattering, it's Lola. Excuse me, come on. It's um, my little dog and she wouldn't stay in the kitchen and she won't sit down either. So that's what the little feet that you hear are. Hopefully she'll settle down in a minute or two. So I will go over just the, the usual things that I need to say and then we'll get stuck into some of the, the nice crafty goodness. So you can find me on Instagram as knitting on the farm with the um, underscores on Ravelry as knitting on the farm um, and I also opened up a podcast group on Ravelry and it's just called knitting on the farm podcast group and I just have one thread on there at the moment but if you watch to the end you'll find out um, what's happening on there and there's going to be um, some more threads opening. On YouTube then I'm knitting on the farm and if you want to email me it's knitting on the farm at gmail.com and if you go onto my Instagram uh, page and into my bio you'll find um, all the links there um, to access all those those places a little bit easier. So uh, let's start with saying thank you. Um, I have reached over 200 subscribers and if you've been following me on Instagram you'll have seen that I did a little giveaway on there and I um, closed it last night and I drew the winner and it was pearls and strings. I know that she has left comments on here and I think she has also left a comment on the Ravelry group. So if you could get in touch with me um, I'd love to get your address and post out um, a little um a little gift to you and then also um i would need to do one on youtube wouldn't i so i'm going to do um one which is going to run from now on to the next time i podcast which will probably be in around the 20th of march and i'm just going to do it on comments um down below um because i'm not quite sure how all this works so i thought i would keep it simple so I think I need to have a keyword to make sure that the comment picker um, will work properly. So if you want to enter, if you could um, comment on what your favorite thing to do is. Um, so if you could start your sentence with my favorite thing and that way um, I think the, the um, picker will pick out favourite and those that don't want to enter then if the word isn't in the sentence they'll not they'll not be picked. So um, just leave your comment down below with the word my favourite thing and um, I will pick a winner just before I do my next podcast and I'll announce it on YouTube and I will also announce it on Instagram and hopefully someone will get back to, get back to me and I'll get the gift in the gift in the post to them. So I think that's all the uh, boring things maybe out of the way. Important but boring. So um why not grab your cuppa and put your feet up and join me as I share my knitting with you and I hope that you enjoy. So Let's start with finished things. Okay, finished things. This week, well, the last two weeks, I don't seem to have really got very much time for, for block knitting. I've been doing a, a row here and a row there, um, but it doesn't seem to have amounted to very much. But one item that I did get finished was Andrew's second pair of socks. That's Lola in the background. She's crazy. So these are the socks. The pattern is by Tracy Miller, the Coffee Talk socks. And the yarn was from Hobbycraft, which is a local or a UK based um, hobby store. Um, and they do online also. It was their two of a kind. 
um, and it was pretty inexpensive um, and this is what I had left then out of um, out of each each skein um, you knit one pair of socks out of each one so I had enough left probably to knit my grandson a pair of cheap socks um, did I enjoy knitting them? I love the pattern as always because that's one of Andrew's favourite patterns um, did I enjoy the yarn? Not particularly. I was glad to get them finished. Um, we'll see how it wears. I mean, if it wears well, it was worth my while. If it doesn't, well, I won't buy any more. But um, it sort of starts off and it, it goes into the darker colours. Um, it's nice enough yarn. It just wasn't maybe particularly nice to, to knit with. Um, so I did the uh, 20 uh, one by one rib and um, through the back loop the 64 stitch leg the eye of partridge heel flap and gusset the 48 row foot and then the rounded the rounded toe which is just my go-to um so let's see how we go closer that's pretty accurate to the color I think the yarn it was quite splitty just because there's like a white that white um thread going through it there um which you just had to be careful with but um it'll all be in the washing and the wearing as they say so we'll see how they they go so that is my one and only completed 100 percent finished object and that was the coffee top socks by tracy miller one other item then that I have half finished is my Field Fair socks. Um, and this was the January Life of Birds Sock Club. And I just had opened it the last time on my podcast. Um, I did the contrasting toe and heel, as you can see. The pattern I used was the toe construction and the heel construction from jewels of old of so sweet violet i used her mabel socks pattern and then the pattern that i used for the top of the foot and the front of the sock is called it'll be fine socks which is basically it's an eight row repeat um and it gives a lovely gives a lovely texture um the yarn looks lovely just as a plain vanilla sock but i just I always like knitting a pattern um, and it's simple and just enough to keep you keep you interested. The pattern calls for doing it both front and back of the sock but Andrew prefers just on the front so you can see the texture and again it was just the 20, the 20 row cuff one by one through the back loop. Yeah, so as always, I really enjoyed, I enjoy knit, enjoy knitting, um, the wool from from Sherry, from Sherry Harris. So that's one sock complete. The second one, then I did get, I did get started, and I've made a little bit of progress on it. I have the toe done, and a few of the repeats done on the foot. Um, the second sock's always easier because you have your row count in there with them, so it's it's easier just to to keep flying on. So that's um, sock number two of my feel fair. So that really is my finished things come half finished. Um, I just don't know really where the time went, and I suppose my shawl and blanket are bigger projects and you don't see the same amount of, of work on them. So um, hopefully by the next time I'll, I'll maybe have some more things, some more things finished. So um, let's chat then about what we have on the needles. I thought I would show you my, show you my mug. Um, I got it last year for Mother's Day from my grandson and granddaughter. And it says, Nan, it's just another word for love. And my grandson was only only four and he went shopping with his mum and he asked her what it said. And then 
when she told him he said that was what he wanted to that was what he wanted to pick so it makes it rather makes it rather special and it's a really nice china mug and keeps my coffee keeps my coffee nice and warm so what have we on the needles then let's start with my my blanket this is the seaside stroll baby blanket um, it's a free pattern and I got it on Ravelry I think um, and I said that I was knitting it just in uh, in Sardar yeah Sardar snuggly cash merino yarn and I was knitting it in the in the white color and it was a wool acrylic and cashmere blend and I made a couple of modifications to it. I think I talked about them the last time. The last time I showed it to you, I had just got to the blue marker. I just had the ribbing done. And I said that I had decided to do um, an eye cord cast on. You can see, and I'm doing the eye cord, the eye cord border. So I have a few of the repeats done. It's a simple slip stitch pattern but it's um it's really nice i i like it um the wheels knitting up beautifully it's really nice i thought i would show you my little butterfly stitch markers aren't those beautiful i got those for uh christmas in a christmas swap i did from lupin lane lupin lane handmade and uh, they're beautiful so so pretty and i thought just for for knitting the the blanket they were just so pretty on there it's just to to make sure that i because i changed the pattern uh slightly that i i just keep those first few first few stitches right so i haven't as i say done a lot on it I haven't lifted it really this last this last week to be honest um so i need to i need to get back to that because March is here and sometimes babies can arrive. Babies can arrive early, can't they? And um, I want to I want to have it have it finished. So that is my seaside stroll baby blanket in uh Sardar, Sardar Cash Merino. So what else? Of course then when I um finished my uh, socks for Andrew, um what do you do but you have to cast it on another pair um, it's like an addiction isn't it so my yarn come in then for the february um month of the sock club and i posted a, a photo on instagram um did i post it uh, no i think I, I i post it now because i was afraid to post it in case um some international shipping hadn't arrived and i didn't want to spoil it so i can put that um photo in here on the video and i can put it up on instagram now but this is the um this is the yarn and um, the bird this month was the blue jay um which is a us bird and i really enjoyed um learning about it and these are the colours that Sherry Harris Designs um, made from the inspiration of that bird. And then this is the contrast. It is so, so subtle. Actually, it's showing really well there, just the, the difference. And this represents the, the eggs. And it's it's really nice. I, I just love how how soft uh, and how muted really it is. So I'll show you the little bit that I have done. I don't have a lot done, but I just wanted to I just wanted to get it to get it started. So I've only really done a little bit last night. And I talked last last podcast about which pattern I would use, and I decided to use the faithful friend sock pattern um from danny of little bobbins and i just i love it um let me see if i can 
it's got lots of little eyelets in it. If you can see, they're just starting there. So I've done the cuff and the contrast, so you can see how muted, how muted it really is. What if I do that? Is that better? I can't see now what I'm showing you at all. But I will show you the pattern maybe, and that's easier. It's a pet for a pattern. But that's, that's the actual pattern. Um, it's a 12 row repeat it's not it's not hard to do and I think it'll turn out it'll turn out lovely um, and I just do my usual eye of partridge heel and I'll do the rounded toe just the way just the way I always do so that is the blue J socks um, from Sherry Iris designs the in the countries are the life of birds sorry sock club and I have another month signed up for and I will I'll do the next ones as well sorry if it's not showing up very well so that's the other project that's on the needles so one final thing then is my snow melt shawl I am up to 85% of it done they are long rows now way over 500 stitches and i'm on the complete it's all eyelets now so it's probably about 20 minutes a row um can you see the the progress keeper there's a little marker and um, if i hold it that way maybe it's easier for me to hold it you can see where the the little marker is there so i I've got quite a bit done, I suppose, really, when you consider the length of the rows. So I'm down into the one colour now, which is this, um, the darker of the, the two camel colours. And it'll, it's really working in very nicely after the grey. So it is, I'm so chuffed with it. And although it's all eyelet now, it's, it's easy enough, it's just... As usual with eyelets, you just have to be careful. But um, I think I maybe have about 20, 20 odd more rows to do. I should have put it onto put it onto wider, longer needles to let you see. But this I really do hope to have finished and off the needles by next time, and I'm going to tell you why now very shortly. So that's the um, snow melt shawl. And that's by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And that I'm knitting in the Camel Silk Base from Ellie of Craft House Magic. It's 50% camel and 50% silk. It really is lovely and it really is lovely and soft. And it is actually very warm when it's on your knee when you're knitting it. Um, so it'll be It'll be nice for just coming into this time of the this time of the year and it really it is my colours. I'm not one for not one for very bright colours at all. So that's the um snowmelt shawl. And I wanted to share just with you, I only noticed it I only noticed it really today, and I should have noticed it before that. And that is the the bag that I was keeping it in. I got this bag as a Christmas gift from my friend um, Diane who is knitting bumping on Instagram and she's also got her shop on Etsy called Elm Tree Yarns and she makes bags and book covers and lots of different things and um, she sent me this bag for Christmas and I just noticed today that it has actually got eggs on it and um, so it's perfect for perfect for Easter and it's a great size for a great size for um, a shawl and I love the nice dark bottom on it so thank you very much Diane um, for that um, I have so many bags but um, it's nice to have the bigger the bigger bag sometimes even I find the bigger bag for socks is good too because by the time you put in 
your you know your skins and all your your bits and pieces and notebooks and things it's nice to to have plenty of room for them so next um some happy meal and i had ordered this quite a while ago and it just arrived yesterday and it has been creating a stir um on social media and you'll understand why if you get your hands on one it's called 52 weeks 52 weeks of socks and it's by lane my uh, lane magazines and it is a unique look into modern international sock knitting now i haven't had a chance to actually even really go through it apart from just flick page upon page it's a nice hardback book and some of the sock patterns in it are amazing um, it includes the patterns but it also has some beautiful artwork really really pretty and there's a sock to suit everybody every style that you could every style that you could imagine let's see if i can pages are just so new it's a uh, hard to even open um there's so many nice ones of some of them it's a really special book it's i was so glad that i was able to able to get one and that um i was able to wait on it i think those are lovely something a wee bit something a wee bit different so there's actually 52 pair in it It is an investment. It, it wasn't a it wasn't a cheap book, and as you can imagine, with the with the weight, um, it, it was a considerable amount of postage as well. But absolutely worth it. These are the ones I wanted to I wanted to show you. It's just a, a lovely coffee table sideboard book, and something that you'll pick up all the time and just take a look at so um i'm pleased that it pleased that it arrived and i was able to to get it i love just the simplicity of it just the nice and then the little band out around it um it's tight a timeless piece it'll never never date sure it won't so that was one thing that came and i really really was looking forward to that then the February sock clump came, which I sh oops sorry, which I showed you, which was the yarn that I'm knitting the um, faithful for, uh, friend socks in. And another thing that I did, I did get. I've had these and the batteries ran out on them, and I got some more. Um, you can pick them up really, really cheap on some of the the cheaper um, the cheaper websites in comparison to maybe some of the knitting sites maybe that's not something I should say but they're little digital counters um, um, and they go on your finger and they're great for keeping record of rows and then the small button takes you back to zero again so I was able to buy four or five of those and I um they're very handy to have so they they came then as a total surprise from my very special friend Diane who I got to know just through Instagram I've never met her um but she's just a really true genuine Instagram friend I got um a hand quilted um gift for my birthday now this is the cushion cover or the the pajama warmer and um, she said put a hot water bottle in and keep your pajamas warm so that was a fantastic idea just look at all those fabrics and the lovely butterflies and such pretty colors but that wasn't enough if you can see behind me i'm just going to move that you can see she also gave me this 
This is a little throw for the bottom of the bed. No, Lola, we're not going to bed. Lola's down from the chair. She thinks we're going to bed. Isn't that amazing? I was totally overwhelmed. I mean, for someone to someone to put that much effort into into a gift for a person that you've never met. I mean, I think that's really that's really true kindness. And I think where social media can be so so negative at times, and it can hurt so many people's feelings because. Sometimes people just think they can say what they like because they're never going to bump into you or they're never going to meet you. Um, there's also the there's also the the flip of the coin, and you get people that are so genuine and sincere, and they send you something like that. So Diane, thank you so much. Diane has some lovely puppies as well. And Lola loves when Diane sends gifts because there's always something in it for her. Um, so thank you so much for your kindness. And it has been on, on our bed and uh, it just matches in, matches in beautifully. So if you want, pop over to Diane's shop. It's Elm Tree Yarns and uh, you'll see her lovely all her lovely goods. Her, her yarn's beautiful as well. I think she's doing quite a bit of Beatrix Potter at the moment and uh, they're really really they're really really nice or should I say Beatrix Potter inspired yarn and it's it's beautiful so it is so pop across and treat yourself maybe for something for knitting for Easter so that is um, some of the Happy Meal well actually it's all the Happy Meal that has come in the post over the last couple of weeks so let's move on to um, a little bit of other news. Um, I have been, I'm sure like everybody else, watching, always watch podcasts when you're when you're knitting, if you have the house to yourself. And I have been watching a podcast. Um, it's called Ollie and Bella. And the girl um, that hosts that podcast is called Cherie. And over the last week, I've really got to know Cherie um, a lot more and she's a really nice girl and her little daughter Jessie is she's amazing she's just so cute and uh, it's just lovely to see her on the podcast Um, Cherie's actually doing Marchmas and um, she's vlogging most days um, and putting up little snippets of not only her craft but her family life and her life in the kitchen and things so um you would really enjoy, I think if you, you like my podcast, you would enjoy hers as well. She's a lovely, a lovely girl. And I'm not sure whether I mentioned at the beginning or not, but I had up on Instagram that I was doing a Lent um, reading plan um, on the book of Matthew. And um, you have so many, a few verses every day and you write them out and um, it takes you through the story. Um, leading up to the crucifixion of of Jesus and some people asked me on Instagram they said it would be great to share it on my video but I feel that I would be very much just sort of putting it in as an afterthought at the end and I'm not sure it, you know it maybe isn't something for everybody so I'm just going to do a little 10 minute video separately like the way I did for the knitting journal and I'll pop it up um, over the next couple of days and we can chat about it there and I think that's I think that's the easiest way um, the easiest way to do it so um, if that's something of interest to you you can watch out for that so then I did say at the beginning to watch to the end because I had some exciting news well it's exciting to me um, I don't know whether hopefully it'll be exciting to you too I did say I set up the Ravelry the podcast group and thanks to everybody that was that has commented on it and then I just have the one thread on it so I am going to be opening another thread and I am going to have a make-along now 
I don't join in a lot on make alongs um, that are on Ravelry, um, but I thought um, it would be something nice to do for the people that the people that have joined the group. So I have watched um, another podcast called The Way So and So, and it's a girl called Kaz, and she's from Scotland, and I just love her accent and. I love her her style and I mean wow she can knit um I mean she can knit jumpers in, in literally days. Um she has some beautiful things knit and it would be really worth your while going across. I'll put her link um down below as well for you. But I was talking to her and I said to her, you know, do you fancy doing a, a joint make along to help me out because I really don't know what I'm doing. So Kaz said, yeah, sure, that would be smashing, which is her favorite word. And um, she she helped me sort it out. So we have decided to call the, the make along uh, Leap Into Spring. And this year being a leap year and coming into spring, we thought that was a nice, that was a, a good, a good name for it. So we're going to open threads in both our Ravelry group um, sorry, both in my Ravelry group and in uh, Kaz's Ravelry group. Kaz also does a, a make along for um, a sweater every year. So for the Leap Into Spring make along, she is hosting the accessories section. Accessories being shawls, uh, hats, gloves, mittens, socks, Anything else, dishcloths, um, I'm trying to think what else she, anything that you, anything that you knit that isn't a garment. So because she has the, the sweater um, make along going of her own, she's, she's going to host the, the accessories and she will have a chatter thread and she will have a finished object thread um, for that. I am going to host on my group the uh, make along jumper or garment um, section and there's going to be a chatter thread for it and there's going to be a finished object thread. So if you enter a jumper of course in my group pop along and enter the group enter your sweater or your, your garment into Kaz's uh, make along and that way you'll have um, you'll be fit to have a double a double entry so you might as well do that there's going to be some really lovely prizes i know Kaz has some things already and i'm i'm collecting some things as well so um it's going to run from today then until the 30th of june so i will open the threads after i finish recording here and it would be brilliant if you um if you like to to join in it would be it's a great way of seeing what other people are knitting and it's a great way of finding new patterns and not only finding them but getting feedback on how the pattern has actually worked for people sometimes all these patterns are great but they maybe are difficult to follow they're maybe not easy easy to knit and you know people have their feedback and it's really good to get really good to get that and you know yarn that's used and needles and gauge and all that stuff so um as I say, I'll open those threads now. I think Kaz maybe has hers already opened and um, you can pop over there and see what's going on. There's just a couple of things really um, as guidelines or um, guidelines for, for joining. If you could um, be a subscriber to both Kaz's podcast, The Wee So-and-So, and, -so, and um, be a subscriber to mine, to Knitting on the Farm on uh, YouTube that would be great and then obviously you also need to join the two groups and um, the two podcast groups on Ravelry. The other thing is um, if you could keep the finished objects thread just to finish objects um, and keep the chatter to the chatter thread I think it leaves it easier possibly for drawing winners I've read that and heard that on some other podcasts so there's obviously a reason for it so I'm just going to go with <laughs> I'm going to go with the same thing too um, and also if you have some things on the needles um, at the moment don't be afraid to enter them um, as long as you've done less than 50% um, 
that's fine um, and we're not going to we're not really going to hold you to that and um, so we're not and if you could keep a project page for the for the item that would be good too because it means people can people can uh, see how you know see the project and um, see the yarn choice and things if they want to refer back to it without going into the chatter thread so how strict is it? It's not strict at all. Um, what qualifies for leap into spring? One of my main reasons for casting on these socks was um, I could enter these, not that I'm going to, but um, I'll not be entering for a prize, but I'll put them on. Um, I could easily enter these as leap into spring because you could say that this is the skies changing from the dark days of winter to the brighter blue skies of spring so that justifies to me that that would be eligible for Kaz's um, accessories group and then for the sweater um, section I think my sweater that I talked to you about the fern and feather sweater would be ideal because I'm knitting it in the green colorways that I showed you and um, the green grass becomes more lush in spring um, you see it change into the, the nice green healthy color from the frosted winter grass so that um, to me would be um, a good reason for to enter it into the um, gar uh, the garment um, section in my podcast in my podcast group so that's probably all as clear as mud and I know I watched Kaz's podcast and I know she has said sort of more or less the same thing but I will put all the notes into the top of the chatter thread in the podcast group on Ravelry and that will keep you right and I mean don't be getting hung up on things if if it doesn't work out or you think it's 51% instead of 49 don't be worrying about it it's all very easy going and if you've watched Kaz's podcast you'll know she's pretty easy going in fact she's very easy going but she's an absolute a lovely girl and I'm so pleased that she's helping me out and that we're um doing this together because it's a good opportunity for us to get to good opportunity for us to get to know each other a wee bit better and um isn't that what the crafting community is all about so I think that is basically I think that is basically me I have chitter chattered on here long enough um, that's all the crafty all the crafty things and I know some people like the to hear how the farm's going and what's happening it's very busy at the minute um, we've had uh, three births from Thursday or from yesterday and another one possibly has happened from lunchtime so you'll have seen a lovely little photograph um, at the beginning of the, the video here and you'll have seen it on Instagram of a cute calf that was born the other day and uh, it just happened to be sitting with its legs crossed to get its photograph taken so that was that was nice um, uh, there was a boy calf born in the early hours of this morning and uh, there was a girl a girl born just before lunchtime so um there was all panics here this morning because andrew uh, wakened and he looked at the clock and thought it was 3 30 and he needed to get up to to check the the cow to make sure that she wasn't in labor and when he got changed and went to the farm it was 5 30 so um Thankfully, she hadn't give birth, and there was no there was no problems because um, she was a first time mum, and sometimes first time mums can have um, a few problems just delivering. I suppose like like all first time mums, so um, it was good that she hadn't um, she hadn't tried too hard because the boys needed to be there and they needed to to help her out. So it all went it all went well. So I'm not sure what name that calf's going to have. It'll have the prefix Banwater and it'll have its mum's cow family name and it'll have a number after it. Um, so I can keep you up to date on that. Um, we're also in between the rain trying to get um, as much farmyard manure onto the arable ground as we can. Um, that's the cheapest way of um, putting the nourishment into the ground and 
in between the showers we're trying to do that but the weather hasn't been weather hasn't been great and the fields are very very wet and soggy so it's it's making that job a bit more a bit more difficult so any chance the boys get that's what they're that's what they're doing um planting time for the crops we grow is usually in around april so we we'll have a wee bit of time but for for the ground to be able to get the nourishment out of the manure and the sooner it's on the better and it's all all systems go to get to get that done and i think that's basically all apart from the day-to-day -day milking and the day-to-day -day running of the farm and i am going to wrap this up now because our son has given a surprise visit and he's down at his his grands and he will be he'll be coming up now shortly and i'm going to spend some time with him and with our grandchildren so until the next time um thank you for watching and um, make sure to pop across and start your chatters on what projects you're going to start and enter into the leap into spring make along make sure and pop over to the wee so-and-so and and join in in the chatter there for the accessories and see the chatter that's going on for Kaz's sweater make along there as well and um, join in there too I will try and be as active as I can on there it's not something that comes naturally to me so I'm going to try and discipline myself to to pop across so um if I'm not there don't worry about it chat away among yourselves and if I don't comment I definitely will be reading the comments so um make sure to make sure to join in and next time I can maybe share some of the some of the prizes that there'll be also make sure and leave your comment down below um for the 200 subscriber giveaway and don't forget to start your sentence with my favorite thing and um that way hopefully my first time comment picker for youtube will be successful um so that would be that would be brilliant and uh, thank you so much for for your subscription so far your comments so far your words of kindness and encouragement i really do appreciate them uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and enjoy your crafting until we meet and chat again in a couple of weeks time thanks for watching